McClure shared how she was upset and how hard everything was. The best friend told McClure that she has so many people on her side and she has an amazing support system, but none of them know the truth, McClure responds. By March 2018, all of the $367,108.81 distributed by GoFundMe to D'Amico and McClure was gone. On November 10th, 2017, 5.42 p.m., Mark D'Amico, boyfriend of Kate McClure, took a photograph of McClure and Johnny Bobbitt Jr., a homeless man standing in front of the intersection of Ramp B on the Girard Avenue off-ramp of Interstate 95 in Philadelphia, PA. Within hours, McClure and D'Amico created a charitable campaign on the website GoFundMe.com entitled Paying It Forward, purportedly to benefit Bobbitt. The photograph taken by D'Amico was subsequently posted by McClure as the face of the campaign. The campaign listed the target goal of $10,000 to provide Bobbitt with, among other things, first and last month's rent at an apartment, a reliable vehicle, and four to six months' worth of expenses. The campaign has since been taken down. The Paying It Forward campaign featured a story in which McClure related that Bobbitt assisted her one evening in Philadelphia in the fall of 2017. Driving into Philly one night, I made the mistake of thinking I would be able to make it all the way down 95 with my gas light on. I was wrong. I never ran out of gas before. My heart was beating out of my chest. I pulled over as far as I could, got out of the car, headed to the nearest gas station. That's when I met Johnny. Johnny sits on the side of the road every day holding a sign. He saw me pull over and knew something was wrong. He told me to get back in the car and lock the doors. A few minutes later, he came back with a red gas can using his last $20 to make sure I could get home safe. The campaign requested monetary donations for Bobbitt's future well-being and, among other things, attested to his selfless and good-hearted nature. The entire campaign was predicated on a lie. Kate McClure did not run out of gas on an I-95 off-ramp, and Johnny Bobbitt didn't spend his last $20 on her. Rather, D'Amico, McClure, and Bobbitt conspired to invent or promulgate this story in order to deceive potential donors into paying it forward by toying with their emotions to encourage them to contribute to a homeless veteran who purportedly had done a good deed. The evidence developed over the course of this investigation demonstrates that D'Amico and McClure had known Bobbitt for at least a month or more prior to the date of the GoFundMe Paying It Forward campaign's launch, as they had met him on their frequent trips to a local casino. The evidence also shows that Bobbitt, D'Amico, and McClure, to support this false story, staged a photo of McClure and Bobbitt in the neighborhood that Bobbitt frequented, which became the face of the online charitable campaign. McClure herself confirmed that her running out of gas encounter with Bobbitt was completely fictional, intended to make people feel bad so that they would donate, in an electronic message sent within an hour of the establishment of the campaign. D'Amico, McClure, and Bobbitt also picked out a nearby gas station and posed for another photo in front of it for a newspaper article highlighting the Pay It Forward campaign, further buttressing the fabricated story. So basically, they found evidence on her phone in the form of a text message where she said the running out of gas story was false. Yeah, the um, if I remember the quote, uh, she said, you know, the, the story is fake, but the guy is real. And she was basically telling her friend about the campaign. Oh, so her friend knew too. Ew. Oh, that's even worse. When, uh, that's like, I think it's probably the friend, the reason why she got in trouble. <clears throat> Well, I think some of the greed is why they got in trouble, too, because remember now Johnny Bobbitt was going to sue them because they weren't giving him the money. Well, yeah. when it's ill-gotten funds, you know, there's no honor among thieves, right? It makes sense now. Like, before I was thinking, like, why wouldn't they give yep. him the money? Like, what, yep. what? what's the reason here? The reason yep. is because they went into this together to earn money and Bobbitt wants more. Yep. <laughs> or, or they kept too much. You know, the McClure's, because because the GoFundMe campaign paid the McClure's first, or McClure and D'Amico, um, that meant Bobby was at their mercy. How, how does Bobby get his money in this illegal scheme? So he has to sue. And the lawsuit, and the, the, they brought the New Jersey Attorney General, and the Attorney, New Jersey Attorney General found this all out. Now, isn't this sort of like filling out a police report and saying that your cocaine was stolen? Like, 
Do you know what a I mean? Like, bit, although yeah. the lawsuit, yeah, the lawsuit <laughs> was sort of like, let's call more attention to something we did that was illegal. I bet you, yeah. if they never, if they, ne if nobody ever complained, I bet you they would have got away with it. Well, now guess what? Bob is not going to be homeless anymore. Oh no! <laughs> so it worked. It worked. Do you guys yeah. get it? It worked. Bob, it's not going to be homeless anymore. Over the next two and a half weeks, the GoFundMe fundraising campaign continued. They went on a media blitz, repeating their story to print, radio, television, internet outlets, local, national, international, to perpetuate the myth. They provided 25 updates to the GoFundMe Paying It Forward website. One particular update mentioned plans to purchase Bob a new home, used vehicle, establish two trusts to benefit him. They were using the at Get Johnny a Home Twitter feed attributed to Kate McClure, stating that Johnny bought a house. These statements were false. Johnny had not purchased a home during or after the GoFundMe campaign. Reacting to the fake gas story and the rest of the campaign narrative, 14,347 compassionate and trusting donors contributed a total of $402,706 between the campaign's launch and December 11th, 2017. These funds were disbursed and held in accounts that were accessible to D'Amico and McClure, but all three defendants did utilize the funds. The evidence further shows that not only did D'Amico and McClure solicit the funds through the false gas story, but also further deceive donors by using very little of the contributed money for charitable purposes. There were no trusts established for Bobbitt, as the couple had publicly committed to setting up in order to encourage more solicitations, and D'Amico later admitted on national television that he and McClure commingled the donated funds with their own money. D'Amico and McClure spent, quite rapidly, the vast majority of the money for their own benefit, including multiple vacations, extensive gambling, a luxury car, expensive designer handbags, and repayment of personal debts to family members. The couple also purchased a travel trailer for Baba to live in while residing at the Florence Township, New Jersey property. The trailer was sold for $10,000 on June 11th, 2018, and McClure negotiated the check for cash. By March 2018, all of the $367,108.81 distributed by GoFundMe to D'Amico and McClure was gone. Those people were willing to reach into their own pockets and give of their own time and effort and money to help out a person who showed genuine compassion for another. And it turns out to be manufactured compassion to get money that they then blew on themselves and barely even spent on the, the guy. So Bobbitt is kind of a victim in this too. He participated, assuming that he's really homeless. I can kind of see a motivation for that. I'm not forgiving it. But then D'Amico and McClure seem maybe a little bit more guilty on the spectrum. Does that make sense? So Bobbitt files this civil action on August 28th. It blows up. He alleged through his attorneys that he only received $75,000 of the funds. Okay, so maybe he did receive something. Uh, D'Amico, with McClure present, confirmed funds were placed into an account only accessible by them, and that they related well over 150000 was still available. In addition, during the same interview, they indicated that the GoFundMe monies raised for Bobbitt were commingled with the couple's personal funds and admitted that no trust was ever set up. Honorable Paula T. Dow held an emergency hearing and ordered any remaining funds to be turned over into a trust account held by attorneys for Bobbitt. During the hearing on September 4th, it was learned that the transfer as ordered was not completed. D'Amico and McClure stated that no funds remained from the campaign and that the money was gone. On September 5th, Judge Dow held an additional hearing and again counsel for McClure and D'Amico reiterated that there was no money left in their clients' accounts. This is just terrible. These, this is, oh man, these people are damaging our internet, man. The community that we built in part. I mean, I know that we didn't build like all of it with our bare hands. I just mean that we participated in it, which, you know, we're the things being sold to half these companies. So frankly, I think that's pretty remarkable participation. It's pretty significant participation. So we participated in making the internet part of what it is today. And these people 
are sullying it. They are cashing in on its good name. It's 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 like Jorg Sprav getting shut down by Daily Mail and starting the ad apocalypse. It would be like you know this this is this is stuff that gives GoFundMe, which you know GoFundMe doesn't have a bad name. But I'm saying that you know some people will stop and not donate because this happens. And and you know what? That's a good thing because buyer beware and caveat emptor and people should look into things before they donate. But what I'm saying is that this does turn the tide a little bit. And because people did this illegally, not just frivolously, but truly fraudulently and illegally, now there's going to be an extra layer of scrutiny on these kinds of things. Because of the allegations that hundreds of thousands of dollars ostensibly raised by McClure and D'Amico for Bob, it was not turned over to him. The representations of counsel that the money contributed by donors for Bob, it was gone. The Burlington County Prosecutor's Office Financial Crimes Unit initiated an investigation. A search warrant was subsequently applied for and granted for McClure's and D'Amico's residence, vehicle, persons, along with electronic devices. On September 6, 2018, the BCPO, along with the Florence Township Police Department, executed such search warrant at McClure's and D'Amico's residence. Through subsequent investigative efforts and review of evidence seized from the search warrant, the BCPO and Florence Township Police Department were able to confirm that the gas story was complete fabrication. Let's start skipping because this is another eight pages of single-spaced text. A forensic examination was conducted of their Apple iPhones, revealing 60,000 messages between McClure and D'Amico, which discussed the, com the couple's financial woes, inability to pay bills, mounting debts, and casino gambling. In addition, McClure had multiple recordings on her phone between herself and others, including an interview with a literary agent about the Paying It Forward campaign. October 16th, 2017, 4.09 p.m., a lengthy text conversation between McClure and D'Amico and Bobbitt took place. I don't know why that homeless guy by Sugar House keeps popping in my head, in my damn head today. Dude, I just thought about him. The conversation continues with them both wanting to help the guy by providing him with, among other things, food, clothes, a Nintendo Switch, the possibility of a job, and giving him a house. In that same Text exchange McClure confirmed that the couple had given him money, $10, on a prior occasion. November 10th, McClure received a verification code to her cell phone representing the exact time to GoFundMe created the Paying It Forward campaign. Within moments, the GoFundMe link was shared through social media. Same time, 7.25 p.m., less than an hour after the Paying It Forward campaign was launched, a text conversation between McClure and her best friend took place in which McClure admitted that the gas story did not occur. So wait, the gas part is completely made up, but the guy isn't. I had to make something up to make people feel bad, so shush about the made-up part. November 13th, approximately 1.52 p.m., a text conversation between McClure and D'Amico took place regarding McClure's mother's suspicion of the gas story, whether it actually happened. McClure and D'Amico again confirmed the gas story did not occur, but all the other stuff was true. My mom just called me and said that people go to jail for scamming others out of money, so there's that. That's what my own mother thinks of me. November 15th, 1.06 p.m., McClure and her best friend communicated about a recent media article about the GoFundMe campaign by the Burlington County Times. The best friend said, this gas story is going to backfire, LMFAO. Nah, it's all good, was the reply. How would it? They're going to interview him one day and ask him, but you need to tell him first, make sure he knows. Yeah, we will tell him, this week we have to. The same day, McClure communicated with D'Amico about the need to locate Bobbitt in order to talk to him. In the evening hours of November 15th, McClure and D'Amico met with Bobbitt inside their vehicle in the area of Philadelphia where Bobbitt was living. They recorded a video saved on McClure's phone of his reaction to the article about the gas story and paying it forward, which he is observed reading. They also discussed how donors had already contributed approximately $1,700 to the campaign. Most of Bobbitt's reaction was about how the money would change his life. On the video, he did not comment on the fake gas story repeated on the, in the article. Okay, so back me up here, people. This sounds a little bit like, and I'm still, I have an open mind here. It sounds a little bit like Bobbitt didn't know about the fake gas story at first. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. That they took, a, they gave him 10 bucks, took a picture with him, and then they made this up. And then maybe they intended to help him at first. Um, 
although it this this paragraph about how they well we're gonna have to tell him kind of makes me think that they weren't planning on telling him and they were just planning on keeping the money for themselves the whole time if they did plan to help him it's not like they could have possibly known that it was going to get 400 grand no they didn't know that but even a little bit would have uh would have made a difference to mm -hmm. a person who's desperate for money on December 9th, 2017, McClure recorded two conversations, each approximately one hour in length between her and among herself, D'Amico, and a literary agent. The conversations reflected the trio's desire to further enrich themselves through the fake gas story by parlaying it into a book and movie deal. From December 2017 through March 2018, there were hundreds of electronic communications between McClure, D'Amico, and Bobbitt. Bobbitt receiving cash, living on their property, setting up Uber transportation. March 9th, 8.25 a.m., a text conversation occurred between McClure and D'Amico. McClure started the conversation with, I can't believe we have less than 10K left. I'm so upset. No. The conversation continued with McClure and D'Amico going back and forth about spending the funds from the, the GoFundMe campaign. In a year, you'll be laughing about when you blew hundreds of thousands, just like 45K, just like 15K. On March 11th, 2018, 3.56 a.m., McClure and her best friend messaged about McClure's frustration with Bobbitt, in particular with him not going to rehab. Right. Yeah, that's true. Fuck him, though. You really need to get rid of him and get the public off your back by donating. McClure replied, I'll be keeping the rest of the money. Fuck you very much. McClure's best friend followed up with, he could out you. On March 19th, approximately 10.38 a.m., a lengthy text conversation occurred between McClure and D'Amico. The conversation started about questioning the BMW, whether to cancel the warranty on it, because, according to D'Amico, we're going to need all the money we can get for now. Obviously, we fucked up, so calm down. All you need to do is start working at your real job, not the job you think you have. Once you do that, we'll be fine. You logged into poker the exact minute you told me you were doing an invoice. I logged into poker 10 times today. So it looks like they're playing poker online. D'Amico suggested a title loan for 10k using the BMW as collateral or selling the BMW. And the conversation went back and forth about the couple being in financial distress and needing money to pay bills. During this message thread, McClure acknowledges that her bank account with the monies from the campaign was in the negative. On August 10th, 2018, at approximately 4.10 p.m., a conversation between Bobbitt, who was utilizing his brother's Facebook messenger, and D'Amico occurred. We should really talk about things. There has been a lot of public asking questions, and I really don't know what to say. We really should get out of here before things go public. I really, I have really been trying to avoid people, but it's becoming more and more difficult. We, meaning he and his brother, will get on a bus anytime you can take us and watch us leave. I think it's the best idea because we don't want people asking questions. We are still in the same place. We are always on the lookout for you. Hey, I'll get over there this weekend. When I do, you get on a bus. No bullshit. August 15th, McClure shared a screenshot with her best friend of a conversation with Bob Bobbitt utilizing his brother's messenger app. The conversation is as follows. D'Amico stated, I'll be there. There's nothing to investigate. I know that it will only get worse as far as other people and want to avoid it. Yeah, us too. I don't know why you said we mishandled your money. I'm just saying what I was told from someone other than the reporter. You know what we did for you. That's fucked up if you pull that shit, bro. I did not say mishandled. I will tell you exactly what I said. I have not said anything that would jeopardize us. I was afraid of this ha happening. Oh, I guess they're talking about the the commingling of the assets, the commingling of the money. What that means is if you if you ever this is important here. Here is the lesson that you can actually take from this besides don't do this. The lesson you can actually take from this is if you ever come into a even moderate amount of money that belongs to someone else, you can't put it in your bank account. Yes, it is completely possible to, you know, transfer money to your bank account and then give it to somebody else or hold money. for some That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, when you are given a legal position of a trustee or administrator or administratrix is the word for, for the female in, uh, in some, some legalities in some places. Ooh, Latin. Um, 
if you are in one of those positions, you can't just take that person's money and put it into your bank account. Why? Well, one, because it's too easy for you to misspend it, but two, because it needs to be tracked. It needs to be in a separate account. What if the IRS accuses you of not paying your taxes and comes and takes the money? Now, all of a sudden, you're trying to get somebody else's money back from the IRS that came out of your account. They're not going to believe that that's not your money. So, and they're not going to have any reason to give it back. So you now owe that, 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 that trust or whatever, all that money back, and you're now guilty of some kind of fraud. So you don't want to commingle any money. Lawyers are taught this over and over and over and over and over. Um, one of the biggest things that we can do wrong to lose our license is to mishandle client funds. So we have separate accounts. I actually have two trust accounts. Um, I only have really a second one because we're moving from one bank to another. But uh, um, we keep our client money in a trust account for a short period of time. The state keeps the interest on that. And so the account is called an IOLTA account, interest on lawyers' trust accounts. And the state keeps the interest. If there is a large amount of money such that the amount of interest would pay for the account and maybe even make a profit, then it has to go into its own account. From August 15th through 23rd, numerous text messages. The conversations were about news reporters reaching out, the obvious panic involving McClure and what could come of people learning of the fact that the story had not happened. McClure continually messaged with others about her anxiety. McClure told her best friend that she and D'Amico had spoken with a lawyer who told them they only had to give Bob at $10,000. McClure and D'Amico also were communicating with, a literary, with the literary agent on how to address the possible media coverage during this time. A text conversation on August 28th occurred between McClure and her best friend. McClure shared how she was upset and how hard everything was. The best friend told McClure that she has so many people on her side and she has an amazing support system, but none of them know the truth, McClure responds. If there's a way to hide the truth, that would be amazing. Does Johnny know the truth? Kinda. He knows that he gave us 150. He knows that but I don't know if he would admit that. Like, he agreed to split with us, but we didn't sign anything, so how the fuck are we going to prove that? You have half, said the, came the response. No, nothing. That's the issue. September 2nd, McClure recorded a conversation between herself and D'Amico. You don't go to jail for lying on TV. But then D'Amico summarized the expenditures that they made for themselves, 20000 for a BMW, 5000 for Disney, 10000 in handbags. We both went to Vegas. How much did you spend in California? 2500 Probably broke even on the one getting 3700 So you're right there at 40000 Now you want to talk about everything else? Like you act like you didn't spend a dollar? I never said I didn't spend a dollar. I wish that you never updated the GoFundMe. Like we should have just let it go and not fucking kept people informed. Then they go on to various media contacts. I'm going to skip some of this. Analysis was done derived from McClure's primary bank account into which most of the monies were transferred. A net total of $347,567.40 was deposited into McClure's account by GoFundMe from November 2017 through December 2017. This amount is in addition to the $19,541.41 in GoFundMe contributions that were deposited onto Green Dot cards. From November 30th through March 26th, there were 189,375 transferred from primary bank account into other bank accounts owned by McClure, cash withdrawals of almost $90,000, a total of $279,000. Analysis of expenditures made by McClure and D'Amico from bank accounts during this time period shows multiple items of note, casino gambling play of $20, $21,000, travel expenses of $21,000 for a 2018 New Year's Las Vegas vacation, cryptocurrency purchases of $12,750, BMW and trailer purchases totaling $43,000, which was a little bit higher than the $20,000 they thought. There are cash withdrawals from all bank accounts totaling $188,000 during this period. A breakdown of the cash withdrawals above indicates that $85,363 of this amount occurred at or in the vicinity of casinos, 
located in Atlantic City, Ben Salem, Philadelphia, and Las Vegas. They obviously, there's a lot of talk about casinos. They had seen the guy around a casino that they frequented. They had money problems. So it sounds like they were both dealing with gambling addiction and, you know, gambling beyond their means and it was hurting them. And yet when this GoFundMe campaign sort of went viral, one of the reasons for withholding the funds from Johnny Bobbitt uh, at least that was given publicly, was that he wouldn't go to rehab or he was a drug addict. So, you know, you can't just give a bunch of money to a drug addict. Meanwhile, there they are gambling away money that they have promised to another person. You know, yeah. so it's like the difference between being it's, addicted to an it, opioid versus yeah. being addicted to gambling. It was, well, the, this is what, where the word pretense comes from. Um, they used his alleged drug addiction as a pretense to keep control of the money long enough that they could spend it all before anybody could get to it, before anybody could figure it out. This is a common sort of snatch and grab and get away thing. And these people, I mean, besides being trash, are also stupid. Because obviously, when you do something terrible like this, it just adds an extra layer of risk to go telling your best friend about it. I really don't understand. I'm, I guess I'm grateful for the propensity of criminals to reveal themselves so easily. I'll put it that way. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The couple, the couple were charged with second degree theft by deception and conspiracy to commit theft by deception for cooking up the ploy to dupe people out of their donations. It does not say that Bobbitt was charged. I know that Bobbitt um, is attached to Phil Philadelphia, so I think that there was a um, an extradition thing that needed to happen where okay. um, PA would hand over to New Jersey, so that may be why the charges aren't obvious yet. Okay. So hopefully we will get more, well, we definitely will get more information on those charges. Holy mackerel. What, what terrible, 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 terrible people. They just take advantage of your compassion and goodwill. Things that we, virtues that we want to promote, virtues that we want to foster. And then, you know, somebody out there is going to be going, oh, I'm not going to donate. You remember what happened last time. This has already happened to Kickstarter and stuff. Uh, you know, yours truly has received remarkably few of the things that I've Kickstarted. And some of them were good, and others are extremely delayed, and others were actual scams where anybody who funded the peachy printer helped some guy build a house in Canada, and none of us have gotten our money back. They said, you should, you should, you should charge the, car, the thing back on your card. Yeah, they delayed for three, four years before we figured it out. So what am I going to do? My bank doesn't even have, like, a button to go back that far. That is our show. Thank you very much for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. And this is Nico the dog. And he also's back there someplace, giving me the whale eye. Side of your eye, side of your eye. Thank you very much to our Patreon supporters for the month of November. Not the least of which is Justin Rogers, sponsoring at the $500 level. Thank you very much, Justin. At the $50 level, we have Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie, Andy, Vera Mintain, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, aka Breakfast Demon, Spirit Bear, Jan Gray, and Jax Merrick. I did update the panel behind me for the $5 plus supporters. Thank you very much to the approximately 200 of you that are sponsoring our channel at that level as well. Hup. Come on. Good boy. So thank you very much for joining me, everyone. It has been a great show today. Oh, you're such a good boy. I love you so much. Oh, cause you
because you're standing on it. Look at this, because you're standing on it. Jerk. Have a good day. See you later.